Uh, our next guest. Oh, oh, French, French. This is a talented young comedian that I'm excited to bring up here. Uh, he's been part of the Brooklyn Comedy Festival, uh, lots of other festivals. He's got a podcast as well called Asian Not Asian. For those wondering, I'm not Asian. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring up Fumi Abe to the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. This is such a treat. It's great. Isn't it something? Yes, I don't... I love how one always leads for the other one. It's yes, yeah, there's one kind leader. Of like a peer always pressure always an alpha and a beta. <laughs> <laughs> In any situation. Fumi, how are you? I'm doing very well. That's very great. sexy space. Thanks it's for having very, me. very, very sexy space. Yes. And a sexy show, and you come from the sexy state of Ohio. Yes! <laughs> you, you might be the only person to ever say that. That's, that is where I am from. The, the land of, it goes New York and Ohio. That, that's on the sex, top sexy list. <laughs> yep. I always angling for that number two spot. Now, what part of Ohio are you from? I uh, actually grew up in Columbus. Columbus, Columbus Ohio, Ohio. Yes. Wow. sure. Are people right from up. there? Yeah, lots of Columbus there's, people there's here. Some fans of the state. Yep, another place that people are happy to leave <laughs> and, and come to New York. A lot of funny people from Ohio, aren't there? I, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think of other comedians from there. I guess like Drew Carey. Yes, Beth Stelling. Yeah, she's from yep. there. Yep. And uh, oh, Chappelle lives there now. Chappelle lives there. there. Always photobombing people. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, but you, you, I imagine I've only been there, you know, a few times. Okay. <laughs> you ever go up to Grandpa's Cheese Barn? No, what is that? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> if you're on the it actually on the sounds road. like your Grandpa's place. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, this boy, I tell you something. I wouldn't be hosting this show if I was related to Grandpa with the Cheese Barn. Uh, you go up there, uh, 71 or something, and you go from Columbus up to Cleveland. Make oh. a stop at Grandpa's Cheese Barn oh and all kinds of cheeses. You like cheese, Fumi? I do like cheese, yes. Man, this place has got every cheese you could imagine. You got some kind of smoked meats in there, too. Oh you gosh. probably get some pretzel rods. You got some kind of uh, peppermint candies. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what? I, actually, I do like cheese, but cheese is actually the Asian people's kryptonite. We're yeah. very sensitive stomach, so we can't really... That's God telling us that. Yeah. <laughs> Asian people right. sensitive stomachs, so... <laughs> Yeah, but you know what's weird? In in, uh, in Columbus, we have an Amish community. Yeah. So we would always go there to get cheese and meat and stuff. So go right to the shores. Right. Right to the Amish. Exactly, folks. yeah. Yep. So we didn't have to go up to Cleveland. But I'll, I'll definitely check it out next time I'm back. Please do. Sure. That yes. would be great. Maybe you can book a gig or something up there. I don't know. In the cheese shop? Or yeah, it's kind of a happening lunch scene. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I assume your career is going pretty well, but, you know... Well, if you need, can if use you need a, little, a spot. Yeah, you can use a little cheese chop sure. lift. You, you ever know? spontaneously yeah. do stand up for anybody? Spontaneously? Yeah. Just like in the middle of conversation? Yeah, or in the middle of a cheese place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like that's kind of looked down upon in like the comedy community. Like, in, like un, uh, intentionally running a bit by somebody. Yeah. It's a little annoying. Yeah. I try not to do that. I, I do it sometimes. Um, if I can, you know, kind of sneak it in. But I, I try not to do that if I can, yeah. for sure. Well, listen, if you get the laughs. I say go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Count it as a show. Right now, was it difficult? I've been there a couple of times to Ohio. Uh, the Asian population is not the first thing that comes to mind. Right. We are not known for that. No. Right. Well, what, was it tough growing up there in Columbus? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, weirdly enough, in, in Columbus, there is a large Japanese population because there's a Honda factory in Maryland, Ohio. And so because of that, a lot of expats go there. So that's one of the reasons why my father moved our family over there, because he's an engineer and he built factories for Honda. So there's like a big Japanese community. Unfortunately, the school district that I went to, my parents didn't want to send me to a school district with, with a lot of Japanese kids because they didn't want me to speak Japanese at school. So they sent me to a school district that was a little far further away and I was kind of forced to learn English kind of on the go. Yeah. And so my experience is very different from other Japanese kids in that area for sure. Yeah. So it was, I mean, it was, it was a little bit difficult at first, but you know, I moved when I was eight and kid, I feel like it, like, like racism starts at like age 10. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, you know, like at eight, they don't really know what it is. You're just like a dude that you can play dodgeball with. Yeah. So it's very harmonious. And yes. then 
10 is where you're like, oh, your eyes are weird, you know? So there's a little bit of time there for sure, yeah. So 10 on was difficult for ten, you. 10 on was very difficult, yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. for sure, yeah. And, but you, you made it through. Yeah. I'm when did here. you find comedy within that? Well, I think that, like, immigrants, like, kids of immigrants find different ways to sort of assimilate to a culture, whatever that may be. In yep. my case, it was a predominantly white culture and, you know, some sort of, I guess some people look to academics, some people look to sports and... Sure. I, don't, I don't have that, so I kind of always use like humor as like a tool to sort of navigate the social scene. So I guess it was just always def- it was like a defense mechanism for me to like fit in. And this is getting very sad. I'm so sorry, um, but you know, like to fit in, like make friends. So I've always just like tried to pursue comedy in social settings, yeah. um, just to make friends. You know, just sure. to, just be a part. Of, just want to be a Buckeye. If you get that reference. <laughs> I do. Oh, sure. <laughs> I do. The great Ohio State. Yeah. Well, Hallie and I played musical instruments. That's how we got through it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I did that, too. I had a very... Uh, I was doing music before I was doing comedy. So. Oh, really? Yeah. What was your instrument? I started with trumpet. Trumpet? Yes. Nice. you got to have a nice ombre show to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One could say that. Um, <laughs> Sounds like a trumpet. That was very good. Does it? Does it? Does it? Does it? Yeah. Does it? <laughs> yeah. No, that one did. That one did. That one I got. Okay. All right. Uh, now, um, how long have you been in New York? I moved here in 2008 to go to school. So I've been here for almost, I guess, 10 years. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, that's a good amount of yeah, time. That's, that's a good amount of time. Now, will you go back there for Thanksgiving? You know, my family does not live there anymore, so I only go back for weddings and stuff. What happened to them? Where are they? (laughs) Well, they're still alive. Um, (laughs) My sister's in Boston, and then my parents moved to Mexico uh, for a similar reason as to why they moved to Ohio in the first place. My dad's job, they're just building more factories over there. Okay, right, right. He's a lifelong Honda employee? Uh, he actually works for like a company that does business with Honda. Okay. Uh, they like build factories for Honda mufflers and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things happening in Central America. So that's that's why he's there. Okay. Yeah. That seems nice. So so that, so you spend uh, Thanksgiving with friends. I'm actually tra- I'm actually leaving tomorrow to go to Peru. I try to travel during. Boy, Thanksgiving. that's the birthplace of Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I try to. You know, I don't do Thanksgiving with my family that often, so I try to travel. I, I go. You know, I try to go somewhere. That that'll um, be tremendously exciting. Yes, I'm very excited. Yes. Yeah. Were you going to hike something? No, we're going to just kind of cruise up the Machu Picchu. <laughs> not, I don't know if cruise you can tell up, my Cruise up to Machu Picchu. Yeah, I'm not a hiker. No. No. No, take, take, <laughs> no by all means, take a car. <laughs> yes, so we're taking a bus. We're not that rich. We're taking a bus. Um, yeah, take a bus. No, that's good for the environment. Take a bus. <laughs> All the way up to that sacred yeah. site, yeah. <laughs> Just chug along, really diesel or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're an adventurous person. Are you an adventurous person, for me? Um, I think within like the metropolis area, I am. You know, within New York, I'm fairly adventurous. Like, yep. if you want to take me to like a weird sex party thing like i'll be i'm down i'll just like i'll just go to watch i'll just I'm, I'm down i will never judge you for inviting me to like a weird thing but in terms of like hiking and stuff like hold that, on now, <laughs> number one that wasn't my first thought. I'd, ha- I'd be happy for you to join us but just watching is not that's looked down upon oh okay, okay well, at, the, I, at the sex party show okay, okay. If you're coming with us, you got to participate. Okay, I, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. I'm yeah, not, yeah, Ben. That's okay. You can't just, you know, recede into the background. Ah, I see. All right, you've got to be an active member. <laughs> okay, leave your keys in the bowl and we'll get to it. <laughs> I'd like to think that I'm an adventurous person. You look like you. But I was watching that new Star Trek show. Have you watched any of that? Is it on Hulu? Was it on? It's on a, some kind of CBS All Access. I paid three hundred dollars to have this streaming service, <laughs> and it's just marvelous. I, I, I get all the murder she wrote and all the magnet. Wow! Yeah. It's great. really, really great. Really great. CBS is the best network, and uh, uh, but I saw on there a lady uh, puts on the spacesuit and she just shoots off towards something, mm-hmm. and you think, nah, no way. 
No way. Because if you're in uh, Starfleet, you know how this is going to go. Right. You're going to end up in some kind of Klingon situation, <laughs> and that's going to spark a war. I don't need to do that. Let the robot go. Incidentally, they had a very sexy robot on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and she... I guess she died. I don't know. Her, her define, define sexy robot, please. <laughs> she has a robot face, but a, la a lady body. That'll do it. That'll do it. And I was like, yes, please. But her her console started sparking, so I guess she's dead. And it made me think that maybe all that Star Trek needs is like a good surge suppressor, because all the time, anytime they get attacked, it sparks from the you know the console. That's a very good point. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. 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 That's, who needs a DJ? This is a theremin <laughs> player. That's all you need. That's all you need. You gotta, you gotta know. Famously, one of the first uses, I think, of the theremin uh, was the Star Trek theme. It's actually a myth. It's actually a myth. It was an opera singer, but it sounds like a theremin. I should correct it. <laughs> Thank you, Cornelius. Uh, <laughs> a lot of knowledge in that shiny shirt. <clears throat> yeah, but now, now the show that you have, Asian, not Asian. Yes. What happens on that? Incidentally, everybody has a podcast. You have a podcast, Alan? You know, I had one, and um, it, it, it's no longer. You had one, but it's no longer. But I Want to bring it back. Oh, yeah, okay. It yeah, might be it's time kinda... for me to stop doing it. That's what I. <laughs> Everybody has one now. You have one too? What? This is. You're on it. Oh, this is the podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know. Where's the. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I thought this was a live thing. Um... Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, it's all uh, there. Yeah, everybody does have a podcast. It's okay, it's only been going for 10 years. Why should you know about it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um... It's okay. Yeah, everybody does have a podcast in New York. That's like a thing. I, I read some like New Yorker or like New York Times headline that said like that's, you know, uh, a New Yorker having a podcast is the equivalent of like a suburban person having a child. You know, yes. kind of thing. So I do have a podcast, but ours is different. Ours is different. Uh, it's, about, it's about Asian people. Yes, and yes. you determine what is Asian and what is not Asian? Well, our tagline is, it's two Asian guys, not from Asia, talking about American issues no American gives a fuck about. It's sort of our thing. So it's kind of like... Jesus and Mero or Daily Show, but we talk about things that are happening in our news that including Asian people. We kind of just dissect it, analyze it from, you know, just like a comedic perspective. And I guess a little bit of academic. My co-host is very smart. Yes, good. Um, that's good. So that's good. And I'm dumb. So that's also good for the podcast. That's kind of like our dynamic. And, you know, it's good. We've gotten some traction. Some people have recognized, recognized us when we're walking around and stuff. So, it, you know, it's got... We're trying to, you know, we're trying to get that Asian base, you know, get that Asian base, and then the podcast is for everybody. I'm not trying to be racist yeah, up here, no, but no. you know, we got to start with the base, and then we can we can expand to, expand. to other races. That's um, right. No, I'm that's trying. To I'm trying to build the base of wellness professionals, <laughs> and then <laughs> go out. And give, it's a slow build, though. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Give yourself ten years and see. <laughs> Maybe I'll get Casper Mattress to come in and sponsor you. But it sounds very exciting. Now, are you going to do some stand-up city? you got some shows, some festivals coming up? Yeah, um, so I actually produce a show not too far from here. It's every third Wednesday called Hack City. I do it with the guy I run the podcast with. Yeah. Uh, I won't be there this month. It's actually happening next Wednesday. It's free, 8 o'clock at Black Cat LES. That's 172 Rivington. It's like a block or two away from here. Okay. I'm not going to be there, but you should go. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to come see me... Specifically, um, you gotta I'll go be, to Peru. Yes, I'll be doing some, uh, you know, jokes for the llamas up in the <laughs> Machu Picchu. Yeah. Um, I'll be at UCB Hell's Kitchen on the thirtieth at seven thirty. Okay. I don't remember what the name of the show is called, but I'll be I'll be there. That's right. Yes. That's all we need. Yes. Just knowing you you are there. <laughs> it gives me comfort. Well, allow yes. me to sleep tonight. <laughs> Fumiabe, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Yes, please. That's why I put three chairs there. <laughs>